If you're watching this video, then chances are you're wondering if Bandai Namco's Gundam Breaker 4, well, if it's worth it or not. So I've been playing the game for almost a week now since release, I've finished it, built a whole lot of Gundams, and I would have platinumed it too if two of the trophies weren't locked to an event that hasn't happened yet. I absolutely loved it, but it's not a game for everyone without a doubt, so here's my 10 reasons why you should get Gundam Breaker. And 10 reasons why you shouldn't. So many Gundams! Yeah, this game has a whole lot of mobile suits. This is the fourth game, well technically the fifth one. So all the mobile suits they would have had in games before, they've just popped into this one as well. If you take a look at this little menu down here, there are 24 different slots for groupings of mobile suits. Each one of these contains multiple universes. So that is 24 slots, multiple universes per slots, tons of mobile suits per universe, so there's a lot of mobile suits. Chances are, no matter if you're into old school UC, that's Universal Century, the original universe, Gundam Wing, Gundam 00, Iron-Blooded Orphans, Gundam Seed, no matter what, you will find the mobile suits you want. There's a whole lot of mobile suits in this game. Except when there isn't. So yeah, if you're coming right off of The Witch from Mercury and you're super excited about Gundam and you're like, yes, I want to play a Gundam game, well, there's only two Witch from Mercury mobile suits in this game. There's only Gundam Ariel and the Daryl Balde. That is it. Chances are, more than likely, the rest are going to be locked behind a paywall as future DLC, which sucks. It's not a cheap game. As well as The Witch from Mercury, the last three releases are not represented. Of course, that's The Witch from Mercury, the movie Gundam Seed Freedom, there's absolutely nothing from that, and the last thing before that was Gundam Hathaway's Flash, and there is the Sea Gundam in it, but that is it. None of the other awesome mobile suits. So you may want to check out the roster before you buy. Combat is fun. Throughout the game, I had an absolute blast with the combat. There's a lot you can do to kind of mix up and decide on your own fighting style, which is really cool. Depending on the mobile suits you're using or what universes you like, you can build yourself a robot that fights the way that you want it. You've got a lot of options. You've got your left hand and your right hand when it does come to the close quarters weapons. So you can stick a whip in one hand, a saber in the other hand, and they both do different things. One is attached to the square button, one's attached triangle button, press buttons. It's fun. There is a whole lot of weapons to mix this up, and they all have different kind of combos and specialties to them, but they're kind of the same as well. But you've got your sabers, your axes, twin blades, great blades, there's a lot of different weapons. On top of that, you have three types of melee, that is regular punching, martial arts punching, and claw slashing. On top of that, some actual arms and body parts have associated attacks with them too. And that's just the close range. The long range is pretty much the same too. You've got a left arm and a right arm weapon. So you have four weapons in total. Again, you've got variations of weapons. So you've got your rifles, long rifles, bazookas, and they all work in a different kind of way, like usual pew, 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 and holding down buttons for Wing Gundam style big buster shots. Once again, a whole lot of fun, but combat is shallow. You're not going to be timing any combos, this is not Devil May Cry. The way it kind of works is when you're in melee combat, square and triangle are associated left and right weapons. You can press square, square, square in order to hit with your left, 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 triangle, 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 to hit with your right, right, right. Whether you're standing still or pressing forward changes the kind of attack combo, and if you hold down the button you'll get a different kind of attack, like spinning a cyclone blade above your head or knocking someone in the air. With the blast, it's just shooting, 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 or you can just hold down the button to sometimes charge or fire a big blast. That is it. It gets very repetitive, but depth through multiple layers of shallow. Yeah, what might seem a little bit shallow at first glance actually has other elements to it. For example, it's not just your weapons that give you different attacks. Your body parts do too. For example, if you take a mobile suit like Heavy Arms from Gundam Wing, it's got Gatlings in its chest, missiles on its shoulder. If you take something like the Fats, which is the full armor Zeta, it's got a big old gun on its back and a load of missile canisters. These work too. These are all attached to the R1 button. So you've got R1 triangle, R1 square, R1 circle, R1 X to use these little guys down here in the right hand corner. You can press left and right the D-pad to go through two different palettes of these so you can have multiple attacks. Well, that adds a nice layer to the combat. Some of these are melee attacks, some of them are long range attacks. Combine them with your usual square triangle and trigger shooting, you can get yourself some nice combos and it gives it a nice extra little bit of depth on top of this somewhat shallow combat. Now you will be getting a whole bunch of Gundam parts throughout the game that you'll just keep getting as you progress. Adding them onto your mobile suit and swapping out bits means that you're always kind of getting something a little fresh. So once again, there's a bit of depth through multiple somewhat shallow layers. 
but no transformations. Back in 1985, a Gundam series came out, the second ever Gundam series, Zeta Gundam. This introduced the idea of a transforming Gundam, one that would transform from a mobile suit mode to a flight form called a Wave Rider. This has become a Gundam staple since, there's always a Zeta-like suit in pretty much every series. There is no transformations in Gundam Breaker 4. There probably wasn't in 1 through 3 either, I don't really remember, but that is missing. I do understand it makes sense. This is a game about making custom mobile suits from a whole bunch of different parts. Amalgamating a transforming mechanic into that would be almost impossible and pretty disastrous, I would assume. It, well, it could be funny. But yeah, there's no transformations in this game, so if you wanted to see a Wave Rider or other flight forms like the Age 2 Magnum, Force Impulse, Wing Gundam, it's not happening. Building is half the game. Now I've played Gundam Breaker 1 through 3 before. Those were my go-to games whenever I was traveling in Japan. On the train, Gundam Breaker. On a plane, Gundam Breaker. Hiding at work in a closet somewhere, Gundam Breaker. I never found the building to be as heavy an aspect in those games as it is in this one. I find them always changing, always adding new parts, getting addicted to adding cool color schemes. It just works out so well. The battle damage, everything, it's just so nice decals, you will be spending so much time building. Even if you don't like the nuances of painting up your Gundam and stuff like that, you will be just adding new parts to kind of get a, well, a new flow to your battle system, getting it just perfect for you. Also, making a mecha that looks kick arse. This game has also added something called builder's parts. Now these are parts that supplement aspects of your mobile suit. Now you might have put yourself together a mobile suit with a whole bunch of cool weapons and stuff, but then you realize it's got no abilities. That's the L1 and R1 menus. So what can you do then? You want to get rid of some of your nice looking parts? No, builder's parts. You can add some of these on, tiny little gatlings, missile pods, everything you need to supplement the build you've done. There is also very nice cosmetic ones too, which you can build up on your suit. There's a limit to how many you can use, which is a little bit sad, but overall it's great for stylistically changing your Gundam and adding some new nice attacks. However, building is half the game. If you do not like the building or the build aspect, that is going to make this game kind of lack in any kind of depth whatsoever. Because, you know, even if you just throw on some new parts real quick because you don't want to be doing any building, you just want to get into the action, well then this game may not be for you. You're going to be spending a whole lot of time in the menus building up your perfect Gundam model kit. And if you don't enjoy that aspect, it mightn't be the game for you. Gunpla adds. Now you might think, well, what kind of positive point is this? I love Gunpla. My life is based around Gunpla. Quite literally, every day, Gunpla. Live and breathe, Gunpla. It's what I do, it's what I love. So just seeing the little ads added into the game is fantastic. It's just really, really, really cool. You can go up to the screen, watch it happen, and yeah, just watch a Gundam ad, an ad for some Gundam plastic model kits. It's a game about Gundam plastic model kits, aimed at people who like Gundam plastic model kits. So they put in some ads for Gundam plastic model kits. The sickness is real, and I love it. But, addiction trigger. This isn't kind of funny. This game is definitely an addiction trigger. You may think you've got your Gundam addiction under wraps. You may not yet have a Gundam model kit addiction yet. This game will make sure that you do. Not only is there Gundam ads in the game, not only does the game feature a little shop where you can go buy in some Gunpla where it actually features the boxes with the box arts on them and the little blurbs on the side of the boxes. You can't read them, it's blurred out, but it's still a nice attention to detail. But not just that, as you go through the game, smashing Gundams to bits, picking up new parts, those new parts will trigger you to want to build onto your new Gundam and they may make you realize you've got a bit of a hole in your collection. You might start writing out a little bit of a shopping list. I've started writing out a little bit of a shopping list. Uh, yeah, this game can be an addiction trigger. If you've got 5,000 kits in the backlog, this kit is going to make it 10,000. Just be warned. Universe's new hero. This to me as a Gundam fan was kind of my favorite aspect of this game. It was just something I like to do, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. And that is, you can actually select the universes and just the parts of certain universes and you can build yourself a mobile suit based in that universe. I find it's a fun way to actually come up with a little bit of a custom instead of using parts from everything. I made a custom that I feel would slot nicely into Gundam 00 by using just Gundam 00 parts. Same with Wing, just using different Wing aspects. If you love a certain series, as long as it's not The Witch from Mercury, you can really get in there and take bits and pieces from different suits and make your perfect suit from specific universes. 
For example, if you love something like G Gundam, you can just go in, select G Gundam only, take a bunch of G Gundam parts, add the attacks as martial arts, take some elements from other shows, for example, Build Fighters, you can take the G Gen Hao School of Martial Arts fire punches and stuff, color up your mobile suit to kind of look like it would fit right in to the G Gundam world and make yourself a G Gundam hero Gundam. It's just so much fun. And you can do that with every universe. One of my favorite things to do. The story. If you can even call it that. If you're coming for the plot, I would almost say don't. Gundam series are known for the really intricate, detailed plots. No good, no evil. Usually no good, no evil. Two sides of the same coin. War is bad. Complex issues with robots somewhat in the middle. So as for the TLDR, this game right here is set in the Gundam Batlog universe, which may or may not be the Gundam Build Divers universe. It's kind of hard to say. The Gundam Build lines have kind of blurred, and I think they may all be the same universe, but I don't know. Basically what happens is, you're a guy, you turn up, you're new to it, you're awesome, everyone thinks you're great or wants to beat you, for some reason you're just greater than everyone and you save the Gundam world, just cause you're awesome. This is also told in an almost visual novel kind of way where the characters just pop up. It is fully voice acted. You can choose English or Japanese and the text in either or so you can have whatever mix and match you want. The conversations are kind of clunky because it is just the mobile suits in the background kind of emoting while things are happening. And when it comes to the actual in-game cutscenes, again, they're just kind of puppeted mobile suits. It's a little bit weird. The story is something we've seen thousands and thousands of times before. And I feel like I've literally seen this in one of the Gundam builds before. Someone is bad and has taken over the world of the Gunpla that we all love. You must save it. The characters are very tropey, extremely, extremely tropey, which you may love, may hate, and the bad guy is literally Kono Dio. I mean, come on. Also, I will mention there really isn't any connection to any Gundam universes at large, nothing really kind of has any effect on anything, and the only real cameo we get is some characters from one of the Gundam Batlogs. Otherwise, there's not really much Gundam to it. Ultimates. The ones you know. Earlier on I mentioned that little palette on the right hand side of the screen which has all the innate abilities that all the parts on your mobile suit has that you can fire off whenever you want and you just have to wait for the cooldowns. Well on the other side of the screen this is your big attacks and it uses a thing known as the EX gauge. This builds up while you're fighting, it goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and there's numbers associated with those attacks down in the left hand side. These will be special attacks you will know from various series. Ultimate attacks, for example, like the satellite cannon from Gundam X, the spinning twin busters from Gundam Wing, or the various kind of power-up modes that mobile suits have. For example, Wing Gundam Zero System, Double O's Trans Am, S Gundam's Alice System, Exam System, Unicorn's NTD, pretty much all of that is in this game with the associated different effects. And with Unicorn Gundam, it will actually separate into that NTD mode with all that glowing cycle frame. All of that is in the game and that is pretty cool. Now I will mention though, essentially all of those transformations are kind of the same and they just kind of give you a bit of a boost in combat. But it's cool that they're in it. No sense of scale. Remembering Gundam Breaker 1 through 3, all those levels that made you know you're playing with a small scale Gundam plastic model kit. You're not a real giant robot out in that real world, you're a little plastic model kit. So there was casino tables, build desks, Gundam boxes in the background, everything that made you know that you're a tiny little plastic model beating the crap out of other tiny little plastic models. That is not in this game and that makes me so, so sad. This is more like Gundam Build Divers. If you don't know what Gundam Build Divers is, it's basically an online game that people have logged into. So it's just a game in a game. So these aren't actual plastic models fighting, it's digital data sadness. I like the idea of the little plastic models beating each other up. Now there is a level towards the end of the game that does have some Gundam model kit sprues and runners thrown around the place. So it kind of gives a little bit of scale, but I miss that aspect. Bandai, please add it back in. EXTREME CUSTOMIZATION! This game compared to the ones that came before has the most ridiculous off the charts level of customization. If you've been anywhere looking, well I mean anywhere online, looking at the customs people have been making, they are crazy. You can do what you want, magic carp this, pokemon that, people have made crazy things because of the level of customization. You can make your serious robots alright, but you could also make crazy stuff too and that's just fun. Except for the... Clunky UI. 
This game has the clunkiest user interface ever, it's just so awkward. Most of the time it's okay, but the menus and stuff can be just kind of silly. The worst thing I've found so far is the naming of Gundams. You make yourself a model kit, you want to name your said new custom Gundam model kit, but for ages I checked and looked around and I was like, what's going on? How do I name it? How do I name it? Just in case you don't know how to name it or you need to know how to name it, you save the model kit, name the save file of the model kit, then load that save file and now the model kit is named. But if you build anything onto this and save it as another save slot, it will be named that. And you have to do the process again, it's just needlessly awkward. There's just other kind of niggly little things that would have made the game a little bit easier. You cannot save your color presets. So if you have made yourself a really cool color scheme and you'd like to use that in another Gundam just to see how it would work, you can't just save it to paste onto future Gundams, which does suck. Of course you can load that save file, again really clunky, and build parts on and retain the color scheme, but it'd be nice to be able to save presets. And speaking of presets, unless I'm missing it like so many things in this game, you can't just load up pre-built OG Gundams. For example, if you just want to play a Strike Freedom, you should be able to just load a preset of Strike Freedom with all the parts attached together and the associated skills in the associated slots for using, so you don't have to build it every time. If you just want to try a Gundam, you have to put it together by bits and then add in all of the abilities. It's clunky. TUTORIALS! I don't know about you, but I hate unskippable tutorials, and a lot of this game is kind of like that. If you go to the diorama mode, there's a diorama mode where you can actually put your Gundams in a little bit of a scene if you want to. I found it a little bit redundant, but you might find it a little bit of fun. I made this Jaws with the giant bear guy about to kill a new Gundam. You can do a lot with it, it is a bit of fun. But this does have a tutorial that doesn't let you even exit it at all. Once you get caught in it, you're caught in it. And you can only press the directions it will allow you to get to where you need to go on the menu. And you cannot skip it to try and figure it out on your own, which is what I prefer to do with games personally. If you hate locked in tutorials and a game that holds your hand, a lot of the beginning of the game locks out a lot of the different combat elements until you progress through the story, which does feel like it helps with the overwhelming of the amount of aspects in the game, but sometimes I just like to go balls first, you know, right on in there with everything available, and I wish that was an option. If you hate tutorials, eh, everything is viable. When I started with this game, I was worried that I'd be stuck to just using the best parts, not the nicest looking parts. To me, kind of the aesthetics was the most important aspect, and I didn't want to be stuck with no skills because of that. That's not an issue, thankfully. Every weapon and every body part is viable, you can level them all up and they're really kind of extremely well balanced. No saber is any stronger really than any other saber, it just depends on the level. Same with the weapons, they might shoot a little different, but the DPS on everything is essentially the same. On top of that there's a thing called mastery. You get pieces from destroying Gundams, these are called parts enhance and parts evolve. Using the parts evolve you can up the mastery level of an item, get it to max full gold stars and all of its abilities become available to use all of the time no matter what body part you're using. So if you had an ability on a body part that you liked but you thought the body part looked crap, master it, use a nice looking body part, and you can still use its ability. For example, I spent the whole game using funnels and missile spam. But that meant I was covered in missile pods, which I didn't really like, so I usually minimize their size. However, after the end game, you can just take a body part that has loads of missiles on it, for example, like the fats, which has loads of missiles on it, mastery it, and then you can use those abilities freely no matter what body parts you're using. However, there is this weird caveat where the body part changes to the associated body part with the ability in a weird clear blue version for the duration of using the attack, which doesn't look right, and it can change the scale of your Gundam depending on if you've adjusted it, so it's a bit weird, but it still works. No Gundam music. There's no denying that Gundam has had some of the greatest anime music over the years. Here's a little bit of an example.
in usual anime game kind of way, there is none of that in the game whatsoever. Not a single Gundam tune to be heard anywhere at any time. This is just the Japanese music industry, it's really bad. You never get anime games with proper anime music, definitely not the intros or the outros. Instead, you're stuck with this. So yeah, that's a bit on the sad side. The ultimate tool for Gunpla builders. When all is said and done and you're kind of done with the actual game aspect of the game, this is still a massively powerful tool for Gundam builders. Now I don't customize kits that often, but when I do, I find one of the hardest aspects is just to conceptualize it first. What colors will work the best, what parts, and in a way you're taking a little bit of a risk once you finally commit. With this game you can actually set out the Gundam parts you want, even just the straight up Gundam kit that you want to color and just try various colors on it. Try different decals, different decal color combinations, whether or not it would look good with battle damage or not, it really is the ultimate Gundam Builders tool. This right here, Gundam Breaker 4, is the perfect companion for any Gunpla Builder and Gundam Customizer. It is fantastic and has all the tools you'll need to conceptualize a build before you start into it and potentially make a misstep. But on the flip side to that, there's not much else. When it comes to Gundam Breaker 4, there really isn't a whole lot here for non-Gundam or non-Gunpla fans. If you're finding you're a bit Gund curious, you want to get into Gundam and you want to get into Gunpla, this might seem like a good first step, but it doesn't really feel like it. At its core, this is like a build simulator with a little bit of a game in order to get the parts. The game is only about half of it, and by the end game, a very grindy aspect of it, and very, very repetitive. It's just arenas, you break Gundams, you get parts to build. Also, it is $60 or 60 euro brand new, and if you're looking to get into Gundam, that could be invested somewhere a little bit better, like to get yourself a Gundam model kit and maybe something like a Crunchyroll subscription and get into Gundam the old-fashioned way. I've got a list of videos for Gundam kits that are Gundarium tier. These are fantastic, you will love them. If you want to get into Gundam, just choose one of those and get watching some Gundam. This game right here feels like it expects you to know stuff already and I can imagine there really isn't enough meat on the bones of this game to satisfy just gamers curious about Gundam. So yeah, that is it. My final conclusion and my final, I guess, opinion on this game is it was fantastic. It was absolutely fun and I loved it, but I live and breathe Gundam and Gunpla. If that's you, this game might be perfect for you too. Now, I've been playing it since release, which must be about five days now, and I've pretty much done everything. There really is just a couple of parts left for me to collect, not a lot. There's two trophies left that are locked behind an event that hasn't happened yet, otherwise it would be platinumed. And I really feel there isn't much left here, except to screw around and build Gundam. So all that's left is the Gundam building aspect, which to me is still a whole lot of fun and great. But if you're looking for a game, there isn't really a whole lot of actual game here. My verdict is, wait for a sale, then take the plunge. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam related content and as always I will see you next time. As always I can't finish this video without special thanks to those who support the channel on the memberships as well as over on Patreon including Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Joe, Org59061, ShadowWolf179, Ten Soldier YT, and Van Fawn.